Welcome to The Art of Medicine, the program that explores the arts, business, and clinical aspects of the practice of medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Andrew Wilner, and my special guest today is Dr. Christopher Liu. Dr. Liu is a very interesting guy, financially independent when he was still in his 20s. He has become an entrepreneur, and he's willing to share his secrets with me and with you, and I can't wait. But before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Comp Health. If you're a physician looking for a new job or considering locum tenens for the first time, be sure to check out Comp Health. I've worked locum tenens with Comp Health. I appreciate the personalized experience I have with my recruiter who is dedicated to my specialty and knows my needs and goals. Comp Health also offers full-time permanent jobs if you're looking for a longer-term switch. For more information, check out comphealth.com. And now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Christopher Lowe. Welcome, Dr. Lowe. Hey, Andrew. Thanks for that wonderful introduction, and I know we had a really uh, engaged discussion in the backstage. I'm happy to be on the podcast and hopefully share my knowledge and wisdom and my story to your audience. Right. Well, we only have 15 minutes and I know I could talk to you for at least the <laughs> entire morning. So uh, I want you to choose first, you know, tell us kind of how you got to be the guy that you are, you know, in uh, not in 25 words or less, but maybe two minutes, because I want to make sure we get to those uh, financial tips about being uh, independent, which uh, frankly, I have not achieved. So uh, I'm looking for some free advice. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I have an interesting background and interesting story. And um, uh, I grew up on the cusp of Gen X and millennials. So and, um, and uh, for me, my motive and my uh, passion was always about freedom and quality of life. So from an early age, I was always trying to be independent, and, you know, not depend upon, you know, government or my parents, I could, I wanted to do it on my own. So the predominant way of thinking of financial freedom in the 80s, 90s was you got a high paying job, you joined the corporate world, you know, you worked 40 or 50 years. And um, so I did all of that. And, but the interesting thing was I'm always an entrepreneur at heart. So I was seeing all these, um, my friends and colleagues reach financial independence and financial freedom earlier, either by investing or either by starting companies, uh, starting new ventures. So I was, I was torn. Um, I, I got into my first choice medical school at, at Baylor. I was part of the MD PhD program. And so I saw two contrasting worlds. One was where physicians, they went to work every day, saw their patients, operated in another world, which was my PhD world, <clears throat> which was at Rice, where a lot of entrepreneur scientists were starting companies, were commercializing their ideas, were changing the world and developing new, these new products and innovations. So I got to see that firsthand and I really um, resonated with that community. So I was able to network. I was able to sit in with a lot of the MBAs. I got a lot of um, interesting uh, mindsets and interesting tips. So during that time, I, during my graduate studies, I started two companies. One was uh, trading options. So this was during the uh, boom of uh, 2002, all the way up to about 2006, 2007, before the uh, entire market crash. So I was making very, very good six-figure profits by trading options. And I was very conservative in the fact that I didn't misspend that money. I really invested it in equities. I learned about real estate. <clears throat> I, I bought gold during that time when it was severely undervalued. So by 29, I had a nest egg. I had uh, was able to teach myself about financial independence. I had rental properties, all of, all of this while I was in medical school. So an interesting story was fourth year medical school, uh, had decent grades, really excellent USMLE scores. And I a graduate, we have to talk with our dean. And he goes, uh, you know, what are your plans? So I told him I have these, these investments and I was able to generate a full, full-time income. And he, was, he told me to go the safe traditional route, which was to get into a competitive specialty, uh, train for six, seven years, work for a number of years, and then do what you wanted. So 
I took that advice and I matched into orthopedic surgery. It really went against my values and beliefs, who I am as a person. And I really saw the contrasting differences between corporate medicine and academic medicine. So I really loved academic medicine. I was, uh, I was able to learn, study. I loved the environment. I loved being around smart people. Uh, you know, but I saw residents and attendings extremely miserable in the corporate world. So I got extremely curious as to why this was happening. And it was boiled down to uh, loss of autonomy, loss of control uh, over physicians' time, money. And so a lot of it was dictated by businessmen, bureaucrats, politicians, the government, insurance. So it had nothing to do with patient care. It had everything to do with profits. And I didn't like this system, and it went against everything I believed in. So, And to top it off, this was during the uh, September of 2008. And if you remember, then that was the day that Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. So I saw corporate America, uh, the greed, um, the excess, the corruption, and they basically fleeced the entire world for billions, if not trillions of dollars based on their mistakes. So I didn't like this and I didn't want to be part of it. So I took a leap of faith I, and I set out to become an entrepreneur. So I would be able to create my own freedom, my own success. And I started investing in severely undervalued single family residences. So long story short, 2008 to 2016, I was a full-time entrepreneur, really learning how to hone my skills as an investor and entrepreneur. And by 2016, my mid thirties, I was a multimillionaire. So um, I was able to retire early. And so, um, and I actually, you know, it was interesting because 2016, I had all this success and I had all this time. So I decided to travel the world to uh, places such as yourself, Southeast Asia, Latin America, Europe. And I really immersed myself in learning about digital entrepreneurship. So, you know, people were using social media, websites, digital products and services, marketing and advertising. And I surrounded myself with the best minds and study YouTube and podcasts to learn how to create a digital business and how to create a brand. Because uh, quite honestly, you know, um, a year off and you have all this time, you know, there's only so much, you know, hotel or travel or beaches you can, after that, it gets extremely boring. You have to have a passion and a purpose. So I spent a year uh, studying as a digital nomad and I came back and I started financial freedom for physicians. And back then it was only an idea. I just wanted to show and teach physicians that they could achieve financial freedom so that Mainly, it was that would ha they would have more control and autonomy over their time and income and their quality of lives, so that they could continue to practice medicine. Um, and it's grown. So I started writing four books. I started speaking. I've been on uh, the Seek Conference, uh, Peter Kim's um, Passive In MD Conference, White Coat Investor. I've, I've written for Doximity, MedPage Today, Somi Docs. Um, I spoke at FinCon. So it's it's really grown. And, and what's interesting was my passion was to really um, just so that physicians could have more autonomy and control. But a lot of physicians are now starting their own companies and their businesses, and they're doing things outside of medicine. So that's been really wonderful to see and to see the, the fruits of, you know, uh, people such as yourself and, you know, all of our um, collective efforts so that we can empower physicians that they can take back control. So and that's my story in a, in a nutshell, and I'm happy to go from there. Wow. Well, you know, thank you. I, you know, we've talked before, but I never sort of had the whole <laughs> picture of how this guy got to be where he uh, is. So certainly a very uh, self-motivated, willing to put in the work and uh, willing to, uh, I think that expression is like, uh, you know, dance to a different drummer. You know, you <laughs> saw what everybody else is doing, but you didn't say, oh, I've got to do that because that's what everybody else is doing. You know, when I was in training, you know, I think every ounce of my energy was just devoted to trying to figure out how to, how to be the best doctor I could be. Mm -hmm. You know, it never really dawned on me that there were other opportunities other than studying, you know, and mm -hmm. I figured, well, financially, you know, I'll just earn what I can earn. And, uh, but those days were different. You know, doctors were treated differently. I think, uh, relatively speaking, they were a little higher income than they are now you know the plumber didn't make more than the than the than the doctor you know it was a little bit different 
And uh, that was never a priority. But I think, you know, today times are different and doctors in many cases uh, have become a commodity mm -hmm. and uh, viewed interchangeably. And, uh, you know, when I researched my book about locum tenens, which has grown enormously, it used to be, you know, why would you want to work here and work there? It was looked upon with some disdain. And now there are over 50,000 doctors working locum tenens. <laughs> and I saw there, you know, it's all about data. In 2016 was the first time, you may know this, that more doctors were employed than mm -hmm. self-employed. Yeah. It used to be as a physician, you had your own building, right? You invested in your office building and then you paid yourself rent and you developed your brand in your community. And that mm -hmm. was kind of a lifetime investment. Typically, you didn't bounce from here to there. But as soon as you became an employee with a one year contract, which is what I have, <laughs> You know, it's uh, you know, there's not that same sense of uh, putting down roots because uh, the the loyalty uh, it's not built in. It certainly can occur, and I'm very loyal to my institution. I think it's wonderful, and I and I hope it's mutual, <laughs> but it's not built in the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. So. Who is your target audience? Uh, me, for example, am I too old to learn anything from you? Is it too late? Or uh, yeah. you know, who who are you trying to help? Well, my well, my niche audience is physicians, and no no physician is actually uh, you know too old or you know as a saying you know you're you always like for example a lot of my clients uh, are um, I was initially working with mid to late stage career physicians. Um, before and during the pandemic. And uh, this was a result of, you know, speaking in front of those types of audiences. Um, now that, you know, we have a YouTube channel and uh, we have a blog and we have the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, uh, a lot of um, medical students, uh, residents, you know, early career attendings are starting to uh, come on as my client cohort. So that's really interesting to see. And um, I think it's a combination of, um, one is demographics, two is um, just in terms of the, the timing. So a lot of, you know, after the pandemic, uh, it really um, made physicians wake up to the fact that uh, they have to start thinking about their financial futures and it may not be solely dependent upon their, their job or so they start to think about that. So now the, that cohort is starting to come on the board. So just in case, everyone in the audience doesn't watch till the very end. How can people get in touch with you? Sure. Uh, number one way is go, go to my website. And we've, I've, we've done a lot of work to ramp it up and really scale it up. And so go to www.drchrisloumdphd.com. You can search for me on Google. It'll show up. It's the number one ranking site. Um, we have the, our YouTube channel. We're really growing that out and um, uh, our podcast as well, Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. Um, other than that, I'm on social media, Twitter, um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We have our private Facebook community. So I'm on all the channels, LinkedIn as well. So, um, you know, reach out to me and we'll find a way to get in touch with you. All right. So hypothetically, uh, I send you an email, Chris, I'm not financially independent. I'm looking for financial freedom. Help. Uh, what happens next? Uh, well, one is, uh, first thing is, you know, we have, uh, we'll direct you to, you know, our, our podcast. We have right now 45, 46 episodes out, um, you know, approaching 50. Uh, on YouTube, we have over 100 videos talking about financial freedom, uh, our blog is, you know, over 50 articles, it's increasing, we're starting to produce one to two blog articles per day. So start with per there. Day? Um, Whoa. Yeah. So yeah, we have actually a large backlog. So you know, our, our editor is, you know, working behind the scenes trying to get it one <laughs> to get up to speed. So um, so from there, uh, it start. you know, you give us, you subscribe to our newsletter, your email, we'll reach out to you um, if you feel like, so we have two, th three types of intro um, calls. One is the 15 minute, you know, very simple, you know, tell us your story, see if we can develop a strategy. Some people need a little bit more after that. So we have the 30 minute and one hour. 
And then, you know, if you want to work with us, we have group coaching and private one-on-one -on -one coaching. So um, it really depends. Like, for example, I had a client last week, you know, 15 minutes. He's very financially savvy, business savvy. So all he needed was 15 minutes. Whereas, uh, you know, a recent client of mine, you know, she's, she, um, she's financially independent, but she's trying to reach financial freedom. So she's looking at all these different uh, options, you know, whether she should blog or podcast or do consulting or writing. So those take a little bit more time. We work a lot with mindsets as well, uh, you know, ideas about money, because it's surprising, but a, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of physicians, they don't have good financial habits, or they're just brought up around money in a different way. So it's really interesting to see uh, those types of, and we try to work with them, their, their money mindset. And then we try to create a plan and implementation for them to start achieving. So first thing is, you know, start saving a lot. So increase your savings rate, um, you know, decrease your consumption. And uh, from there, there's a lot of different strategies in terms of uh, investing, you know, real estate, uh, equities, starting your own business, etc. So balance the budget, number one. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> Don't spend more than you earn. That's like the number one advice I can give, you know, to the mass audience. Yeah, I've heard that yeah. advice before. <laughs> I don't know. You hear these experts giving that advice. And it's like, yeah, I think that sounds right. But somehow that is a, a challenge for many people, isn't it? Yeah. Surprisingly. So. Well, you know, what I really appreciate is you're not saying that to physicians, you know, leave that career that you work so hard, you know, to develop and, you know, become a restaurateur or, you know, a venture capitalist and because physicians do do that, but you're looking at financial freedom as a way to support physicians in their chosen career so that uh, they can ride out the bumps and be more selective where they work you know, and kind of turn the tables a little bit and mm -hmm. uh, say, you know, when you can walk away from a deal, it gives you a lot of power. And when they say, you know, you need to do X, Y, and Z, you say, well, I'll do X, but I'm not doing Y and Z. And they say, oh no, you need to do it. They say, well, bye. I'll go where I can do <laughs> X. That's what I want to do. And all of a sudden you may find that, oh, that's okay. You know, it's because now you have the upper hand because you don't have to have that paycheck that comes every two weeks. You can miss a few of them you know, without uh, the uh, repossessors hauling away the car and, uh, and the house. So uh, I, I think that's really important that people kind of underrate the, the power of uh, that kind of uh, financial freedom. So once again, tell me your, uh, your website. It's uh, www.drchrislewmdphd.com. And, uh, you know, if you have trouble getting there, just go to Google and search uh, Christopher uh, Liu or Christopher H. Liu, MD, PhD. And the, that uh, my website is the top ranking site on that search term. Yeah, I'll second that. In fact, just before we yeah. went on the air, I, I searched you just to see what people were saying. And uh, sure <laughs> enough, you popped, popped right up. So before we close, is there anything uh, you'd like to add, Chris? Uh, well, thanks so much for having me on this podcast. It's actually been quite a journey and um, it's you know from one idea just financial freedom and empowerment to you know doing these podcasts with yourself and others and it's just it's it's been so wonderful to see the community grow well chris thanks so much for sharing your expertise and i'm sure that people who uh who are interested in pursuing this further now have another excellent resource and i want to thank you for that Thanks so much, Andrew. Appreciate you having me. Yep. Thanks for being on The Art of Medicine. Well, I'd like to thank Dr. Christopher Liu for a great discussion and those helpful tips. I think he's a terrific resource and you ought to look him up if uh, you think he'll be helpful. And now, before we close, I'd like to give another thanks to our sponsor, CompHealth. At CompHealth, you can talk with a recruiter who knows your specialty and will actually get to know you and your goals. Consider starting your personalized job search at comphealth.com. Again, that's comphealth.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time. This program is hosted, edited, and produced by Andrew Wilner, MD, FACP, FAAN.
guests receive no financial compensation for their appearance on the art of medicine. Andrew Wilner, MD, is Associate Professor of Neurology at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, Memphis, Tennessee. Views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on this program belong solely to Dr. Wilner and his guests and not necessarily to their employers, organizations, or other group or individual. While this program intends to be informative, it is meant for entertainment purposes only. The Art of Medicine does not offer professional financial, legal, or medical advice. Dr. Wilner and his guests assume no responsibility or liability for any damages, financial or otherwise, that arise in connection with consuming this program's content. Thanks for watching. For more episodes of The Art of Medicine, please subscribe www.andrewwilner.com